Hello, hello, everyone. Welcome to this episode of Sunday Messages. We have a PTA episode today that I'm really excited for. It's been a minute. I've got some prayers. I've got an advice column. We're going to pull some tarot. It's going to be really, really good. So if you are new to my podcast, here's how this works. I haven't explained this in a while. So I hold space for prayers in I'm in agreement for. So what you're going to do on the other side is I'm in agreement for. So it's kind of like you're giving an energetic yes, like yes to this love, yes to this goodness, yes to this well-being. Yes, 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 yes. So as you start to flow that, the interesting thing about this energetically is that you become an energetic match for the same thing. So when you're directing that energy to someone else, it also makes you an energetic match for it at the same time. So that's more of the mechanical element of this, in case you're wondering. And I get a lot of comments from people like, I I can't describe it, but I just love holding space for prayers with you. And that's why. It's because when you're doing it, you're putting yourself in that energetic state. So let's go ahead and dive into prayers right away. This first one is anonymous, but it says, I'd like to be more open to receiving love outside of the love I give myself. I want to correct that because technically it is the same thing, so I'm going to adjust the prayer just a little bit. And then it says, to be less cut off and more trusting of the space of vulnerability. So here's what I'm in agreement for. I'm in agreement for you to be able to hold more. So I'm in full agreement for you to flow more love, to receive more love, and for you to see it as an energetic flow. I would also recommend that you go listen to my podcast episode on love in particular, because that'll probably have some information and wisdom in there for you. But I'm just in full agreement for you to feel secure and stable in the energy of love. So that's what really wants to happen in terms of being more trusting in the space of vulnerability is actually code for, I want to feel more secure within myself as I'm experiencing these things. So I'm in full agreement for all of that. Okay, this next one is for Joanna. And it looks like you have not been able to fly back from Bulgaria. There were some complications with travel. So... I'm in full agreement. I know you submitted this prayer like a week and a half ago or so, but I'm in full agreement for you to have clear vision in all of this. Also, I hope you've already made it back safely. And I'm in full agreement for you to integrate all of this. So any wisdom, clarifications, any bits and pieces of understanding that want to come through, I'm in full agreement for you to receive those with ease. And I'm also in full agreement for you to allow well-being. Full agreement for all of that. Full agreement for you to feel safe and secure within your body. And I'm also in full agreement for you to become an energetic match for pleasure everywhere you go. Play with that. That'll be fun. All right. This next one is for Lindsay. And there's a whole bunch of stuff in here about your dad having lymphoma and stem cell replacement and surgery and chemo and there's just all sorts of health stuff. So what I'm not even going to go into the details of it one because it's going to activate all of the wrong things the things that we do not want you to be focusing on or anyone else who's listening to this to focus on and instead we are going to steer this in the direction of being in full agreement for there to be a remembrance of the body's divine intelligence. So in in these particular types of situations, yeah, there's surgeries, yeah, there's treatments, yeah, 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 yeah. That can all be a part of it. However, the energetic backbone of this, we really want it to be thriving is the natural state. So that's the perspective that you want to hold because that is what we could say like the divine truth. So like the perspective of God would be that thriving is natural. That's actually what wants to happen. 
the same way there's no there's no such thing as like the source of there's only the absence of light so there's no source of shadow it's the absence of light and so anything regarding health is at like a, a disease an ailment pain blah 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 that is the absence of it's the disallowance of light is how you want to look at it and so this is about remembrance of light remembrance that this is natural remembrance that this is easy just coming into that truth again and again and again and again and so for you as a space holder in this situation you would want to continually come back to knowing that for yourself, knowing that for him, being able to see that for him, you get the idea. If you get caught up in, if this doesn't go well, then it means this other bad stuff. Or if this surgery doesn't pan out the way it's supposed to, or if this treatment goes sideways, you're going to be on a really nasty roller coaster ride. You want to come back to the ease and and truest state of thriving, allowing the light. That's essentially how we want to approach health to keep it energetically clean. So I'm in full agreement for you to take really good care of yourself at this time because I I know you, I know how you are. For you to keep your tank full, for you to be immersed in your own thriving, for you to be such a beacon of light that everything around you starts to organize in response and in relationship to your internal influence from your own personal alignment. Full agreement. Okay, this next one is for Susan. And it's interesting, there's definitely a theme of health issues coming up. And one of the things that I feel called to mention, because there are, it is like a laundry list of diagnoses in this prayer request, so let's let's cut all of that out for a second. And even though I understand that this is going to be really controversial for a lot of people, what I would like to introduce, and this is actually what Joe Dispenza calls it, a diagnosis from a doctor is kind of like a voodoo curse. Because when you start identifying with an ailment is what actually makes it stickier. And the reason why that happens is, let's say you start Googling things, you start looking into it, you're reading all of these pamphlets on this new thing that a doctor has presented. Now it's starting to sink into your identity and you're actually giving more energy to the diagnosis opposed to healing right, or opposed to you being in a naturally harmonious relationship with your body and allowing the divine intelligence of your body. One thing to play with around anything regarding health is what if your body knows what it's doing? What if your body already has all the answers? What if your body is capable? What if your body is already on the case? It's already helping you out. It's already organizing everything. And so for you, what I'm what I'm in full agreement for is for you to be less specific, for you to be more general in terms of feeling good, feeling aligned, feeling more hopeful, feeling your way into a more supportive current. Because being ultra specific about things that are scaring you or really specific about pain and all of that stuff adds a whole bunch of clutter to the situation and it actually makes things way more complicated. So the less you can talk about a specific diagnosis, the easier it will be for you to not overly identify with it and the less it's going to cling to you and you want to create some more spaciousness around all of this for new things to emerge, better things to emerge, right? Not just new, not just new, but better. So I'm in full agreement for you to come back into harmony, for you to come back into the divine intelligence of your body, for you to feel guided to the right next steps, for you to come into contact with the right and best practitioners for you at this time. And I'm in full agreement for peace with all of this, full agreement for peace. Also, for anyone who is listening to this, 
I just want to put this here. This doesn't mean that like you should never go to the doctor. I'm advising against going to a doctor. No, 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 no. Of course, that can be a part of the process. But I think what trips people up, and this is the same in mental health as well. It's not just physical health. But things can get worse with a diagnosis because it's more specific. And when you have something that is specific that you're now identifying with, the symptoms will become more inflamed. And the problem with that is that you cannot identify with an ailment and identify with the most harmonious state of your natural body possible at the same time because they're conflicting ideas. They're conflicting thought forms. So that's why you want to get on board with one. And while I understand that there are a lot of people who go through this process of not knowing what's wrong with them and actually experiencing relief when they do receive a diagnosis, when they do get an answer, you don't want to bake that into the cake of you. That's the point. So while, yes, having answers can can bring some relief, having a path forward can bring some relief, that's usually pretty short-lived. And so all I'm proposing here is what happens when you stop including a diagnosis as a part of your identity if you actually want to get better? What happens if you're no longer constantly focusing on it? And just see where that takes you. You can even experiment for a few months or you can try it out and see what happens if you put down the labels and instead you start orienting yourself towards feeling states that are more supportive and conducive to you being in alignment. Just see what happens if you're if you're dealing with something that is ongoing or something that's scaring you or something that you would like to resolve. Just try it out and see what happens. It's literally just a mental game that you're playing with yourself. So there's really no harm in trying it out. So one of the things that has been really present in all of the prayer requests this week is the clutter the clutter, the problems, the details, the the human stuff that gets included in everything. And what I really want everyone to hear is that this is the stuff that makes creation more complicated and it also makes it slower. So once again, I, I have an episode on clean coming out soon, but Of course, it's making an appearance even in the prayers this week, how relevant this idea of energetic cleanliness is. So I just want to point all of this out, that when you are focusing on details, repeatedly focusing on details that clutter the field, your creation gets lost right because now you're you're painting all of these things that you may not be interested in experiencing and so your energetic cleanliness and refinement is critical like if you want to go fast if you want to have potent results if you want to see heaven and earth bend at your command cleanliness is key your ability to remain focused conjure the emotions, conjure the state, the imagery, the story. All of this is contributing to your creations at all time. And so if you want to master this, like if you want to get really, really exceptional at this, if you want out of this world, holy shit kind of results, this is the piece. The cleanliness is the piece. This is the work. So if you want to be immersed in energetic, mental, emotional cleanliness with me, get into clean, apply to clean. Like we're going to be going so deep into all of this and I'm really excited for all of the conversations that are going to come up because everyone who's magnetically called to this container, if you're drawn to this container, it's because you really are inspired to create and you want to be on purpose. You want to feel and think and create on purpose. And it's going to be so much fun to watch and see what happens because if you're doing it on purpose, like I said, everything is going to organize around you in order to accommodate the things that you are cleanly desiring. So we're going to have a fantastic five months together 
It's going to be so much fun. There's going to be so many wonderful conversations and riffs and and things that emerge in there. I am just super, super excited about all of this. So the link to clean will be in the description box, the show notes. If you follow me on Instagram, you can apply over there. And I cannot wait to see you inside. We're going to have a good time. All right, let's get into this advice segment, this advice column. And I don't know why I didn't receive this at the time that it was sent. I'm just now getting it. So I apologize for the delay, but it's a really fun topic that I want to talk about. And this was actually submitted right after I did confidence codes. Okay, so here is what the message says. I just finished watching all the videos on confidence codes and oh my god, love, love, love. I couldn't help but think, how may I use this in my sex life? And here's the background. There has been sexual abuse in my early years, but also religious shame because of the purity culture. But I was also aware to protect myself from casual sex because of my father and mother issues, abuse, so on and so forth. I share all of this saying, I have healed so much in therapy, but now that I'm happily married and in a safe space with my amazing husband, my desire for sex is unfound. I lovingly ask for a prayer and advice on how to best work this out because I want wild sex, but just don't know where to start outside of a yoni egg, meditation, loving my body, dancing, etc. I value your input so much that thought I would love to hear your thoughts on this. Thank you and sending you all the love. And I am sending love right back. Okay, so I have a lot of ideas on this actually. But the first place that I would go is it seems that you have an idea of what tone you desire for your sex life, correct? So how I like to think about frequencies and tones is that they bleed into other things. So let's, because you use the word wild. I want wild sex. Well, let's really think about what is wild. Wild to me sounds like risk. It sounds like adventure. It sounds like play. It sounds like fun. It sounds um, like an edge, right? So that's the, the energy of wild. Now, if you just focus on the energy of wild and all of those things or the energy of adventure, the energy of exploration, fun, play, whatever resonates most with you, you can just allow that to bleed into your sex life through focusing on it in other areas of your life. So the interesting thing is when you become an energetic match for wild, period, in general, outside of your sex life, then things are going to leak into other areas. And so if you're having a hard time conjuring up inspiration for how to actually do that in your sex life, well, then you would want to focus off center and just look at, okay, what's the tone? What's the flavor I'm going for? And then it will organically evolve into sexual inspiration as well. So then it's probably going to come up in the form of an idea or a game or a, a thought or a desire is going to pop up. But it's not going to do that if you put a bunch of pressure on your sex life itself. So that's the thing that really confuses people is they think that they need to focus on something directly in order to make it happen. But that's not true. You can focus on the essence and let it let it naturally evolve. And so that might be the initial approach that you take if approaching it directly just isn't working and is kind of stalling things out. The next place would be just turning up the heat a little bit with yourself. So I know you're mentioning like dancing, but then my question for you would be, What kind of dancing are you doing? Have you ever tried to maybe do some mirror work or turn yourself on or doing things to seduce yourself first so that you can conjure more of that sexual energy? And this is something that just so everyone knows, I do not believe that you either 
have sexual energy or you don't. I don't I don't agree with that idea. I do think that it's something that can be dormant for a lot of people. And so you kind of have to poke at it a little bit because if the desire is there, like, hey, sex is this thing that I want or I want to feel seductive, I want to feel more romantic. Not everyone has the desire for desire itself. But if you have desire to feel sexual desire, you can turn it on but you just want to find the avenue in. And of course, this is one of those situations if you feel as though sexual desire has just been turned off, like there's just been really low permission for all of this, then you can turn to the really simple, basic practices, like all the stereotypical sexy stuff and start there. You can start with lingerie. You can start with reading erotica. I recommend reading it because porn is like, porn is like the McDonald's of sex. And I just don't, it, it's just not good for you. <laughs> so, but you can read things like, because sometimes you do want some inspiration or you do want something to, to, light things up initially and just get started and wake things up within yourself. And so finding those through, yeah, the basics could be really helpful. Play a sexy game. Like, aren't there a million sexual prompts and games and stuff that they have for couples? That could be really fun. You could list a whole bunch of sexual desires, even if they don't necessarily turn you on, but things that you like the idea of, why don't you just list them all out? Or you could even ask your husband, like, what are his sexual fantasies? He could give you some inspiration. The point here is play. And also keep in mind that all you're really doing here is setting the the general objective Like if you just look at, okay, what's the goal? The overarching goal in all of this is to experience greater sexual desire. If that's the goal, a lot can be done with that. Right, you're not you're not going into the specifics of I need to have mind blowing sex today. That's not that's not necessary right this moment. It's just I need to get this pilot kicked on. I need to start the fire and then fan the flames of my desire. That's where you want to go with it. And I should also mention that if you're if you're approaching things in like oh, I'm I'm just loving my body or I'm dancing and then I'm like waiting for this desire to come, it's okay for you to push yourself a little bit more or be more intentional with setting a sexual tone on it, a sexual intention on it, and just creating a container. Like the the container that you're setting is experiencing more sexual desire. Okay, so then you're in this container that you're setting for yourself, and then you just know when you go into that practice that yes, more sexual desire is going to come. Yes, there's no pressure to do that right now, but that is what you go into every practice with the intention of, is that this is kickstarting the pilot of your sexual desire and then you're just going to keep fanning the flames. And you do that as many times as necessary and you can try different things and you can just commit to holding the container and letting your body catch up. And so doing that enough and pushing yourself a little bit more, you know, to to be more deliberate with, I know that my sexual desire is going to wake up more and more and more and more every time it will. Like that's the one thing that I want you to hear is it will follow you. It will follow your lead. You just want to make sure that you have a container and you're pushing yourself just a little bit more. Going outside of your comfort zone a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more. And the pilot will start. That's that's the key thing here. It will start and then things will really take off for you after that. Oh, one more piece that I want to mention is think about it in terms of very small percentages. So like 
if you feel 1% more sexual desire, that's a win. So focus on like very small incremental shifts. That way you're not putting too much pressure on yourself, but you're allowing for that expansion. And that will also make this a lot easier on you. All right, let's pull some tarot. Let's see what's going on this week. Okay, we have temperance. So have you been patient with something? That's the immediate question that I think the cards have for you. And then we have the seven of swords. And the three of swords. Ah, okay. So what the picture that I am getting right now is that there's something you desire. However, there's also either resistance or a conflicting frequency that has been in the mix that needs to be dropped. So a personal example of mine, I've been noticing this for me in terms of the content that I want to put out and all of these things that I want to do. However, I need to drop the should. So the should is the piece, that's that three of swords, seven of swords piece that needs to be left because the should is what's creating this sensation of burnout or I don't wanna. That's the piece that is really getting in the way of what I actually want, which is to be in really nice flow with my content and to feel really good about the things that I'm putting out. But the that element of have to, should, if you don't do this, then some of that baggage, that like human stuff has been coming up and it's really getting in the way of just letting things work. So for you, another example of this might be, let's say you want a relationship in your life but you're putting conditions. You're saying, I can't have a relationship until blah, 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 or that can't come in until. Well, then you want to drop the, this has to happen first. You want to drop the conditions around it and just start allowing your life to organize in a way where you know things are going to work out for you. So that's the trick to this energy is there are no conditions that actually need to be met first. That doesn't actually need to happen. You can actually turn over the order of operations. A lot of the time, what I notice is that we we like the order of operations that we have in our mind, but that's not necessarily going to be what's best in this situation. And so if you can turn that part over and just focus unconditionally on the desire itself and knowing that everything is organizing for that, you don't have to put yourself in this perpetual state of needing to quote unquote wait. Waiting isn't a thing. Waiting is just a story that you're telling yourself about the order of operations or timing or something of the sort. So that is the message for this week. That's a powerful message, by the way. Like really dropping that stuff that is creating baggage, dropping the stuff that is just adding all of this unnecessary complexity to it. And once again, we come back to the theme of clean. We come back around to it again and again and again and again and again and again and again. When I tell you the energetic cleanliness is the secret sauce, that is the piece. That is what you want. That is it. That is it. That is the answer. The cleanliness is the answer. That is the solution. That is what makes you invincible, unstoppable, out of this world. A holy shit, I can't believe that you got that thing that you really wanted, that you focused so cleanly on the desire that heaven and earth, like I said, had no choice but to bend to your command. That is how powerful you are, but you've got to be sharp and you've got to be clean about how you do it. And oh my God, I am so excited for this mastermind. I could explode. So that is what I'm going to leave for you today. Once again, applications for clean. And if you need to get on the wait list for Apex, both of those are in the description box or the show notes. And that is a wrap for this week. 
If you feel so called to send this to someone, if you feel that this episode could support someone or you would like to share this, I always appreciate the shares and the love and the recommendations and sharing on Instagram. I just appreciate you all so much and I will talk to you later. Have a good one, everybody. Bye-bye.